The next person I have to talk is Judith Helfand. Um, do you want a microphone? No, I'm just going to say hi first. Okay, before. great. Um, so here's Judith Helfand, and she's, uh, she helped co-found Working Films, uh, which she'll be talking about, and she was the director of some award-winning films, including Blue Vinyl. So, Judith. Thanks. I'm going to run back now and do a PowerPoint, which I've never really done before, but I just wanted to see all your faces before I'm back again. So I'm Judith. Um, my co-founded Working Films with Robert West about 10 years ago. And I really, um, it was very, very much inspired by George Stoney, who we're lucky to have with us, who was um, constantly saying, always, 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 um, you know, 50% of making a movie or any kind of media is just that, it's making it, but that the other 50% is using it. Um, this is, okay. Um, and, um, and more importantly, you know, when the lights go up um, and you have a, a committed audience and they're sitting there, whether it's two people or 200 people or two million people, perhaps they're watching this piece of media on TV and their heart has been changed and they're opened and all of a sudden they're thinking and they say, oh my gosh, what can I do? That there really needs to be a to-do there. So we created um, Working Films really to create a to-do machine. Um, I think all of us know these days that um, a filmmaker or media person and organization like Deep Dish TV is as good as the marketing that they do and that we have, to, we have had to become all purpose, that we have to be looking at our audience and really asking questions, you know, who are we making this for and how might they use it and what will they need and how do we balance the needs of our narrative with the needs of the organizers on the ground doing that work. And so we really have strived to create a machinery to support filmmakers in that effort so that they don't have to be all things, so that there is some support. And, and to really kind of figure out the math, really figure out how to do it. So as someone who is terrible at math, um, oddly enough, I'm going to be offering you some, we like to sort of call like sort of calculus for social change. It's the highest math I'm ever going to get to. So I'm going to go back there, and I'll move through this. Um, but thanks so much for having me. OK. OK. So. Um, so I'm just going to be offering you um, some best practices that we have really tried to um, put forth as a methodology. Okay, so we're based in um, Wilmington, North Carolina. That's where our home base is. We have a 1910 firehouse. It's, um, we're in North Carolina because, for a lot of reasons, but basically we try to experiment with all of the grassroots organizing projects that we might do and that we might do with films or with filmmakers nationally or internationally even. We try to actually work them out in North Carolina. And so because North Carolina is struggling with economic issues and racial issues and every kind of injustice or educational problem that, that might be, that people might be focusing on in the United States, um, they're, they're doing it right there. And so we try not to waste any of our process. So um, our formula is uh, content plus intent equals change. Um, and I think one of the things that we have really learned, and I really want to urge everybody to think about truly, is that activists actually don't want issues. They do issues for breakfast. It's what they do every day. They are the issues. What they actually want are stories. On the screen, on the ground, in our homes, in our lives. Give them the story and they will provide the strategy and that will get the social change. And so we, um, as an organization, have really made a commitment to link great storytelling to great activism. Um, but we really always say story leads, issue don't. issues don't. Um, so our math, independent, story-driven media, plus on-the-ground organizing and strategy equals impact. Impact is a word that we are hearing all the time. In order to get funding, people want to know, what will that impact be? But here are some of the things that we really use as benchmarks. Um, and I think that um, <clears throat> since you are a network, Deep Dish is a network, and you're really kind of looking to, fig I'm, I'm sure in this next 20 years, 30 years, you'll be really trying to figure out, well, how do I know when, how do I know when it's working? What might I be looking for? What can I use as a criteria for really building a good, healthy network? So we look for authentic, mutually beneficial relationships between filmmakers and activists. What do we mean by that? Sort of a two-way reciprocity. Not 
Not how many butts and seats can I get so that I could keep my movie there for the weekend, or how many screenings can I have, or how many house parties. It's really not about the numbers. It's really about who, which butts are we talking about. Um, and so we're really looking, it's about doing with and not for. It's not, it's not about the numbers or butts and seats. It's sort of which, who, and when. So we're constantly looking for, you know, here is a story. The story is about X. Who needs this? What are they doing? Who are the people that they're reaching out to? And how might they be able to use this work? And the most important thing that we have learned is that no one has time for extras. It's really about embedding media um, in the strategic existing work of activists, organizers, educators, policymakers. So I think that's why street films is being so successful is because they're actually creating something that people really need. They don't know how to make that great jewel of a movie, but they know that they need to be able to persuade Gavin Newsom to do something. So it's really about storytellers doing their best work and then offering it to the people who actually have that work to do anyway. And in a moment when we're all so economically challenged, we really have to maximize all of our resources. So it's not about having extra meetings. It's not about doing all the extra stuff. The other thing that we have really come to really believe in is that it's truly important to sort of maintain your independence. So, and in that regard, it's like the, the activists that are out there who want to use these movies, they don't want the sponsored movie. They really want a movie to be completely, they want it to be independent, but then they want to form a codependent relationship with it. And by independent, I mean, you know, but it's independent in that a person, an organization, a, a, a filmmaker might have made this, but the part that's codependent, that's really about the strategy, is they talk to all the organizers way in advance of this film ever being done to understand what are the needs of those organizers in the streets? What are the issues that they're working on? What are their stumbling blocks? Is it hard for them to translate you know, difficult transportation issues? If that's, what, if that's the really big stumbling block is it's all science and it's difficult and it's text and it's numbers and it's statistics, I have to turn that into a story. Well, if I know that ahead of time, I'm going to be looking for that story, and they're going to be able to use it. And so that's really what we have been striving to do over the last 10 years, is to work with the filmmakers to help them balance the needs of their narratives with the needs of these organizers, and to understand who their audience might be, who might those organizations be, how do I reach them ahead of time, how do I show them my rough cut, my work in progress, how do I build them into the process, how do I get their buy-in. I don't want to come to them at the last minute when, quote unquote, I need them to move my movie into the streets and to fill up the theater. No one wants to do it at the last minute. They don't have time, but they do have time to be a part of a movement. So those are, the, the, those are sort of the criteria, and I think that they can, be, they can translate to a street films, they can translate to the network of organizations that, and filmmakers and media people that make up Deep Dish. Um, we call it movies in service of the movement. Right? Um, and um, the two films that I am I'm gonna just talk about, one is mine, Blue Vinyl, I made that with Daniel Gold in 2002. And then a new film that Working Films is just kind of taking on um, and, and helping them devise their campaign is a film called Garbage Dreams. And it's really both about garbage. Um, with Blue Vinyl, um, I, the film came out in 2002, but I started it in 1998. And between 1998 and, 19, and 2002, I had a tremendous amount of time to find my partner organizations who would really need the film most. The ones that I would say, they're not on the top, they're on the bottom. Um, Center for Health, Environment, and Justice, or the Healthy Building Network. Because I built them and many activists like them, and the kinds of people that would actually need a movie about vinyl into the making of the movie, I really became a part of their movement. By the time the film came out, we really understood what we needed to do. And some examples of some real concrete stuff of embedding a film into the needs of a movement, it was very clear that you know, in order for there to be environmental justice around PVC and vinyl and for the communities on the fence lines like Lake Charles, Louisiana to ever potentially get healthy, we actually had to start not at the fence line, we actually had to start 
with the choices of, of, the choices of middle class consumers and people who hire architects, who spec buildings, who decide what they want to use. And we had to insert ourselves into this discussion that it couldn't just be the vinyl manufacturers talking to them. They had to, they had to learn about this from a different place. Once you start to understand all the needs of these organizations, the, the, the campaign starts to evolve. So one of the things that we ultimately did was we um, were able to create, we had to have screenings, we were going to have them anyway, but we were able, we understood if we could create continuing education credit with the Association of, Indep of Independent Architects, and that any time someone had a screening and they watched this movie, which is a very radical movie, really radical movie, but if they watched this movie and they had a discussion afterwards, they could get continuing education credit. They need educators, policy educators, um, all teachers, all architects, all need continuing education credit every year. Once you understand the needs of a school system or the needs of any specific niche market, then you work backwards and you start to understand what might that campaign look like. So since 2002, we've had over 600 very strategic screenings. They're small. Sometimes they have 20 architects. Sometimes they have 200. They're in little communities. They're in offices all around the country. They get credit. And then there's a big discussion. Don't spec this stuff anymore. So that's one form of organizing. Another form was we formed relationships because of the Healthy Building Network with a group called Kaiser Permanente. They're the largest healthcare um, organization um, in the, on, on the West Coast. And they have hundreds and hundreds of hospitals and miles and miles and miles of flooring. And they build billions of dollars worth of construction. A thousand of their purchasing agents watched Blue Vinyl in a room. It was completely closed door screening. It had nothing to do with it being on HBO or anything like that. After watching it, they made a decision that they really wanted to say, we don't want any more vinyl on our floor tile. They created a PVC-free healthcare floor tile as a standard, and it actually pushed their manufacturers to create a whole new thing, which is now has slowly changing the market in a trickle-down way. So that's impact. We would never know that unless we worked with the organizers well in advance. And then because of them, we realized that we had to work on Habitat for Humanity, and we created the first PVC-free Habitat for Humanity house. It happened to be in New Orleans. Unfortunately, the day that they decided they wanted to build 50 more as a prototype and really bring this out to the country, Katrina happened. But it was only because the Healthy Building Network and um, CHEJ and other organizations like that had been working with me for years. <clears throat> so that was in 2002. We started our organization 10 years ago. Now it's 2010. We take this idea and this methodology and we bring it to every film and filmmaker that we work with. We have something that I can offer all of you and to the network um, as well, which is a free consultation. It's a 45 minute consultation with working film staff on how to think about community and audience engagement. And um, if you go to our website, if you go to our website um, and you fill out a form, you'll, you'll get a 45-minute consultation. We could do it with street films. We could do it with all of you. Um, so flash forward, new films that are coming our way, a film called Garbage Dreams. It's a, it's a really beautiful movie. It was shortlisted for the Oscars. It, it, didn't, it didn't get nominated. But um, it's a beautiful movie about three young teenage boys who live in the in a, in a in the garbage community, there's Zebeline, and they are the traditional garbage haulers and trash haulers in Cairo. Um, and they're, they're teenagers. They go to a recycling school that is trying to help them take, uh, you know, um, a generation's old trade that is really quite looked down upon and turn it into a 21st century green job. And at the very same time that that's happening in this movie, they're being faced with globalization and all these big new garbage trucks that Cairo has hired to come in and take their garbage, which now they won't have, which is their precious resource. And it's a big clash of the little guy and the big guy. It's a great story. Um, ultimately, <clears throat> you know, the big, the, it's no, no one either wins or loses. The big question is that these boys are committed to turning their, their garbage trade into a 21st century green job. Well, we did a lot of work with this filmmaker, and, and she herself you know, has really been pushing this movie out. And some of the things, you know, a good thing that happened, she showed it to the Gates Foundation, and they committed a million dollars to this recycling organization, um, this recycling school. But what we're doing with her in the United States is teaming up with a group called Gaia, which is the global 
Association of Incinerator Activists, and they're all over the world. They're, but they're based here in the United States, but it's a global network, kind of like Deep Dish, I guess. Um, and we're going to be working with them, creating a strategic partnership. It, it's just information now, along with a group called Transition United States, which is an organization that is pushing for just transition and the creation of green jobs. Um, and to craft a take action and to get the word out about hosting strategic community screenings and city screenings that will um, lead up to their, their broadcast on independent lens. But the screenings are going to be very strategic, we hope. They're going to take place in cities around the country that are really trying to push um, and advocate for really changing the quality of recycling jobs and turning recycling into a green job. Um, to do that, we're going to, we're going to be partnering with a new organization called Call to Action, which makes these very interesting widgets, um, which on this widget, which is like a little mini website, you could put in there a feature film trailer, the Gaia's letter to Obama, which is really pushing him to rethink you know, green jobs and recycling jobs. It's a very, very concrete letter, and a call for activists to host screenings, at which point, when they have the screening, they make a link between their call to action locally and this national letter to Obama is really thinking about green jobs. And all of these, it's a tiny little widget that, that can be moved around to anybody else's website, but it kind of contains all of the organizing in one place. And Working Films hosts a site called Screening Headquarters. It's a big map of the United States. I don't quite have it here, but um, all of you are, are, are welcome. It's a service that we offer to filmmakers so that filmmakers don't have to create all of the hardware, and they don't have to make their website, website do all, be all things every single time, and rather, you know, to, to create an armature and a structure that we can offer you so that you can use it. And right now, we're hosting about 20 films that are doing screenings around the country, um, but using that, um, using our headquarters. Our website is workingfilms.org. Um, I really encourage all of you to utilize this. We have funding in, in place so that we could offer people free 45-minute consultations, which is a really good deal. Um, it takes about two or three weeks to sort of get on, the, uh, on a lineup. There's a, there's a queue. Um, but we ask you some very concrete questions about community and audience engagement. What kind of media are you making? What is your story? Who do you think your audience is? How are you working with them now? How are you working with them in advance of your film being done? How might your film be used as part of their ongoing work? Um, and you don't have to have the answers. It's just a place to start. And then we offer you an opportunity to really think about this out loud with us. Um, I'm really lucky I get to be the field explorer. So my part of my job is to um, work on new um, alliances and new um, and developing new relationships. I'd be really interested in talking with Deep Dish and thinking how we can be real supportive moving forward. And I also co-founded and helped run an organization called Chicken and Egg Pictures, and it's just a foundation for women filmmakers. So you girls, um, our next deadline is March 30th. We support emergent and veteran women filmmakers. Um, we provide money and mentorship. We match money with st strategic support of all kinds. Um, and I'm inviting uh, street films to definitely apply. Um, so, thanks. <laughs>